Welcome back from the show break. You're still watching Sunrise at Sea and we're still into our Our Views segment. That was a bit of a tongue twister, our Our Views segment. <laughs> and if you want to be a part of our conversations, all you have to do is head on to our social media and that's at CTV Uganda on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Leave your comment <laughs> and don't forget to use the hashtag CTV Sunrise. Today, ladies, we are going to be discussing generational curses. Yes. And you know, this got my attention <laughs> yesterday when I was, uh, you know, just minding and minding my business and browsing on the on social media, mm -hmm. and then I stumbled on this conversation about generational curses. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, we posted this question on our social media, and the question is, do you believe in generational curses and their effect on one's life? So I went down a rabbit hole, ladies shoot just inside <laughs> the rabbit hole and there's so much with this topic but yes. before we get into it do you believe in generational curses i believe they're actually huh? i believe they're actually there mm -hmm. but i but personally don't believe in generation curses they do exist yes mm -hmm. yeah but i personally don't believe in generation curses and the reason that's why i say that um I believe the mind is a very strong thing, mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, much as we may say, um, my ancestors or in my family, this runs. If you believe that this has actually happened in your family for generations and generations, it's bound to happen, yeah? I was actually having a conversation with a, a friend yesterday yeah. uh, about uh, generation curses. And I was like, do you believe in generation curses? Like, yes and no, yeah? And he was telling me how uh, he just found out recently that uh, Tuesdays, <coughs> Tuesdays are not a good day in his family. His Why? Grand, That's why. His grand, his Why grand, Tuesday? That's not Tuesday. A no, li <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> <laughs> his, his, grand, his grandma, yeah, died on a Tuesday. <clears throat> Everyone that has actually passed away has passed away on a Tuesday. And he got into an accident uh -uh. on a Tuesday. That's so, just karma. That's just karma. It's coming back to so, you. I think he's just being superstitious. Yeah, that's now being superstitious. That's being that superstitious. Is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't believe in generation causes, though. Why? Because <clears throat> the things change. Yeah, things change. And to some extent, even in your generation, I feel things are not going to be the same as the way they were in the previous generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why it comes back to mindset. Yeah. You know, mindset. If you believe this has actually happened or is ongoing and you think at the back of your mind it's going to happen, then, then it's, it's going to happen. happen. What about you, Shiva? Do you believe in generational curses? Yes, I do. <laughs> why? I do believe I, yes, in I do. generational curses. They actually <clears throat> do exist. Like things... I'm going, to, I'm going to, sorry guys, I'm going to go biblical, I'm going to go, I'm going to break it down in the religious aspect. Yeah. All right, Pastor Shiva. <laughs> preach, honey. Preach. Today She's I the preaching. preacher, you know. Anyway, yes, generational curses actually do exist. And what I mean is even in the Bible, we had people, for example, like King Solomon. He had so many wives. His yes. father was David. But you see, there are things that David <laughs> did is in his lineage that actually Solomon picked up from. Now, here's the thing about generational curses. If your forefathers did something, if your forefathers, for example, used to sacrifice people, if your forefathers, for example, had different cultural activities and you do not break them, they follow you. And trust me, it might be, for example, my father that was involved in certain rituals. It may not affect me, but it could probably affect my children. And if we called a pastor here this morning, that is what they will tell you. That is how generational <laughs> curses actually work. They move from one lineage to another. Mm -hmm. And that is how they work. They are there. Let me tell you, if you don't break them, yeah. Well, are, they, are they generational curses or just generational bad habits? No, no, no. Let's get into the definition <laughs> of what a generational curse is. And it's coming up in your screen. Well, according to the Gospel Coalition and uh, people who believe this, like Shivan, <laughs> well, a generational curse describes the cumulative effect on a person of things that their ancestors did, believed, or practiced in in the past and a consequence of an ancestor's actions, beliefs, and sins being passed down. Mm -mm. Well, ancestral sin, so other people call it ancestral sin, or generational sin, or ancestral fault, is the doctrine that individuals inherit the judgment for the sin of their ancestors. It exists primarily as a concept in Mediterranean religions. General, generational sin is referred to in the Bible, and that is in Exodus, 34 verses chapter 34 verses 7 and exodus 34 chapter 34 verse 7 says 
that God visits in brackets <laughs> the iniquity of the fathers of on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Basically meaning that um, uh, ancestors' sins are going to be passed down all the way until exactly. the last generation. However, some mm -hmm. people have uh, theorized this and rationalized it by saying a generational curse is a habit or behavior that has been passed down from one generation to the next. And this one, I believe, I, 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 I agree this one makes one. more yeah. sense to me. Me too, that one makes yes. sense. Because <laughs> when some people say, oh, it's a curse in my family for us to be drunkards, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps, no, no, Your no. great grandfather was a drunkard exactly. because he was drinking for a reason that he refused to deal with head on. Perhaps he had problems, financial problems. Perhaps he was sickly. Perhaps he, he, he had uh, low self esteem. Whatever reason that caused him to start resorting drinking, to yeah. alcohol to you know boost his self esteem or make him feel good about himself. And then when your grandfather saw this, he thought it was normal. Then your father sees this, and then he also normal. thinks it's normal. And now yeah. your sons see he, you drinking, and they think that this is the norm. And then you go on to say, in my family, in my family we're, we're drunkards. drunkards. You know? Don't you think it is just bad habits passed down and not these spiritual bondages? So what Adam and Eve did, yes, it was a bad habit, but are we <laughs> paying for it now? That is a generational curse. Mm -hmm. We inherited it from Adam and Eve. Now it is on us. Shivan, you've taken that story. That is in the Old <laughs> Testament. <laughs> yes, but Jesus came in the so New Testament and said, "All our sins, sins are no, forgiven." No, no. He well, died on the pain, cross. How come yes. the women are still delivering in pain? Shivan, that's not. That's it is part of. It is part, anyway. My uh, point uh, is okay. Shivan, okay. Let me rebuttal. Okay. Let me rebuttal. <laughs> You're saying women are now delivering in pain. Well. Through the coming of Jesus okay. Christ, our Lord and Savior, who forgave us for all our sins, eh? God imparted knowledge into doctors and scientists now, mm. and now women are able to have painless deliveries. <laughs> Ladies that was and clever. gentlemen, <laughs> sire is brainwashing you people. Generational curses, by the way, are real. However, there's actually a way of getting to them, like how like the definitions that Sarah has actually been taking us through. There is a way of actually breaking some of these things. But I would like to give an example. For example, you might not know, but there could be a spirit of premature death in your family that mm -hmm. every single time you have different people in your family that die at a very tender age. And you're asking yourself, is that bad luck? No, it is not bad luck. You have got to break it because it will keep happening you if you do not break it. It's, it can't be by mistake that every single time you have a premature birth in different families or different uh, different uh, different clusters. For us, we have clusters in my in my culture. Different clusters that every time someone gives birth, there's a child dying prematurely. That should be a red flag. Something is wrong somewhere. Perhaps what did your I, forefathers do? Seek God. Perhaps there's a hereditary, is that the word? Yeah. Illness or, or that, that has been passed down from the, yeah, you know, the some, fact, you know, we, some diseases can be, um, uh, can, can be inherited and yeah. are embedded in DNA, some chronic diseases. Yeah. Um, but I think if we try our best to at least try and get the logical aspects of the situation out of the way, and if all that fails, then perhaps we can Spiritual, leave it to spiritual to bondage BGS. and then you know take on measures in which we can break these curses however these are some i want to share with you some of the ways that uh, generational curses can be passed down and number one is through storytelling when our parents tell us oh this happened and this is how we are in the mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. this is how it has always been in the family so you start to hear these stories and think that um, you are the way you are because, because of, of these, these stories, stories yeah. that have been passed down from one generation to another 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 way is through habits you know if you grow up in a family of if you grow up in a single parent home you're most likely to also end up a single parent as just yourself. Yeah, yeah, you know why? Because saying. your parents did not equip you with the proper information or knowledge or, or showed you that what a proper family unit should be like. So for you, you grow up thinking, oh, this is normal. My mom yeah. was a single mom. So there's no problem with me being a single mm -hmm. mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. And also if you grow up in a family where you had an abusive father or an abusive mother, chances are that you are also going to be abusive, abusive because these are habits and uh, these are mannerisms that you have grown up 
being see around, it, I mean, seeing, yeah. and it has now become normalized. And if you actually not to most people that actually keep saying that uh, this keeps happening or that happens, they keep saying, yeah, in my family, you know, I grew up seeing my yeah. dad do this and do that. Or if you're in a family whereby people get married and it reaches a point and there is divorce, oh yeah, no one in, in our family has... Mm. Um, so I think to some extent, exactly. these are actually habits. It goes I down. I wouldn't say that yeah. actually causes the it, habits that goes, we actually pick up on. True. It goes yeah. down to conditioning. Just like when you see young men growing up in a family where they are mostly females. So yes. you had only sisters, only you had moms and aunties around. And the moms and aunties always took care of everything. This young man is going to probably grow up into a young man who still wants a wife to have to take care of him. Very much so. So it, it, it comes down to programming. That is another way in which uh, generational curses are passed down. Mm -mm. They are generational curses. <laughs> and beats. Programming. Habits. No, no, no. They are generational curses. Let me tell you. But she an found, example if you of David. It, Let me give an example of David in the Bible. David in the Bridger. Bible. David in the Bible admired. What? Admired. Admired a wife that wasn't his. <laughs> that wasn't his. And then we see Solomon, his son, having over 700 wives and 500 concubines. Hey. That doesn't happen. Do you know where it stemmed from? The father, <laughs> David. Do not be deceived, ladies and gentlemen. Now, how you can pass, how you can break generational yes. curses? Um, mm -hmm. Just briefly, let me highlight a few, and then, ladies, you can share how you think people can. Can break. I'm break today. I'm so funny, Shivan. If you say you can't go and cut chickens and sacrifice <laughs> chickens, I'm kicking you out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, number one, what some of the generational curses that we have had in our home is uh, living the same exact life that our parents did. So mm -hmm. if your father or your mother was an alcoholic and you go on to copy that habit, yeah. you can break that habit. Number one, by learning the lessons that you got from seeing your parent being an alcoholic, for yeah. instance, or seeing mm. your parent as a single mother. So if there are more disadvantages to how you saw your parents' lives, then how about you pick up those lessons and improve them so that you, d you do not repeat the cycle. Another way, another generation of us is uh, working too hard and your parents don't have any time for you, and all they do is just provide um, you know, financial support, school fees, shelter, just the basic needs, and they never have a, a relationship with your parents. And I think that is the case with a lot of parents. Yeah. We, ha we don't really have a bond with our parents, a personal relationship we with them, until yeah. we actually grow up and become adults and become independent. Yeah. Now that is when they are able to at least you know, start making conversation with you. So when you see your parents working too hard, and now you become a parent. Now you start, you have to prioritize and have an equal work-life balance yeah. so that your kids can have a more personal relationship with you. Another, and that is how you break the curse of working too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Another generational curse, and this is not considering children's feelings. Mm -hmm. You know how parents, our parents can never apologize to you. Oh my God, even yes. if you cause the come solar rain, eclipse. Come shy, come. She will never say she's sorry. <laughs> and this actually uh, leads children to grow up feeling worthless. It causes low self-esteem. It, it, you know, it messes up their confidence. And one way that you can break that is by learning to apologize to your children. Have a cordial conversation with them and admit when you're wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So ladies, how else can you break? Uh, generational causes really quick in 30 seconds galatians 3 13 hey, assure us. christ redeemed us for the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us so mm -hmm. it is written cursed is everyone who hung on a pole he redeemed us in order that the blessing may be given to abraham might come unto the gentiles through christ jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of spirit and be saved so the only way of actually undoing those consequences is if you actually make up your mind to follow and obey Jesus Christ. That is the only way, in my opinion, in my religion, in my perspective, the only way that you can do away with generational curses is by believing and choosing to follow Christ. But also you can choose to say, you know what? 
I am going to start my own lineage of the Aumas and you break all the ties with the rest of your people. All right. <laughs> Let's look at some of the responses from social media. Uh, first, it comes in from Adams Mayambala and he says, I believe in them in a Hollywood movie, not in this era. Huh? And next, it comes in from Wesley Bryan and he says, yes, he does. And uh, Border Guy says, nope, I don't believe in them. And uh, these are other responses that we got direct to us directly to us and this is from sandra energy then she says yes buried equally believe that they can be stopped i have had to sit with my parents and my grandparents down to ask few questions both directly and indirectly and some of those replies sent shivers down my spine and led me to pray and work note that praying and working towards ending it i will not partake in what I do not know. Our next uh, response comes in from Innocent, and then he says, I am a living example of my mom's blessings because of how she treated other people. Mm -hmm. They even tell me so, hence teaching me to also do better by others. And then our next response comes in from Saidat, and she says, no, I don't believe in them. We are all responsible for our own journeys, and I definitely agree with this one. And I would like to leave you with... Um, just this this uh, image right here and it's an image of two sons of an alcoholic father one struggles through life as a drunk and the other becomes successful and an ambitious uh, businessman when they were asked why are you the way you are both replied my father was an alcoholic it's Thank all you. about decisions Thank and that you. is how <clears throat> you can break generational curses mm -hmm. yes. regardless of what it may be mm -hmm. alcoholism it could be disease it could be um bad parenting habits it could be single it could be single you know being single, single eh? you know, not married, not, married <laughs> not getting married <laughs> whatever the case may be you can break be. that chain you can yeah. definitely break that chain what it could be a mental illness you can break the chain by empowering yourself identify and our first segment of our views we're talking about identifying your personality traits mm -hmm. that is one way it's the beginning the genesis of breaking all these uh generational curses and yeah. that is all we had for you on this segment of our views don't blink this is still sunrise at sea I hope you had an amazing time with us on the show. Unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end, but we'll be back here on Monday. And that will be um, 10th January. Yes, 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 I was counting, literally <laughs> counting the <laughs> days. I was counting in my head. Like yes, we'll be back on Monday. And uh, so don't forget to make it a date because the Afghan tournament in uh, Cameroon will be starting on Sunday. You won't yeah. want to miss that. Oh, I'm excited about that. There has been a lot of uh, chaos towards the preparation of the Afghan. But well, it is finally, it's finally going to happen and it's definitely going to be a success. I can't wait for the games to be Again. So before I leave, just briefly, ladies, say bye bye. It's the l first weekend of the year. Yeah, honey. It's <laughs> what about, are your plans this weekend? It's the first weekend. It's the first weekend of the year, and um, we're going all out, people. We're going all out. So if you have plans, just be cautious. You know, uh, COVID is still there. Sanitize. Be on the lookout. You know, bombings also. I'm just saying, yes. just be cautious. <laughs> Look out. Be All cautious. right. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> and until Monday, have a great time. Don't forget to follow us on social media. With love from me and the ladies, have a blessed weekend.